Carlson. I work for the Solano County Agriculture Department, and I'm an agricultural biologist. I'm Ben Lewis, and I work for the Solano County Information Technology Office, and I'm the web developer and supervise everything that goes on on Solano County's website. Not always my fault, though. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking to you. Our thesis was eliminating Solano County food deserts through virtual farmers markets. But Ben, maybe we should explain to them what a virtual farmers market and a food desert is. Maybe we should. <laughs> so a virtual farmers market is an online marketplace where farmers can go and sell their products. And just like you would in the farmers market, you go down, they have different products, different farmers, and you can purchase it. But it needs to be a secure place that people know they're getting the same quality as they would in the market. And there'd be a central drop-off location so that people could pick it up. And so what is a food desert? Well, I'm sorry, Dr. McGee, it's not a dessert. <laughs> it's actually an area of low income and low access to healthy and affordable food. The federal government has refined this down farther to be that it's a low income census tract that has that's more than a mile away from a grocery store. Now, we think, honestly, that's a little too narrow because there are areas in Solano County that are within a mile of a grocery store, but they have zero transportation, so they're still considered a food desert. Solano County itself actually has five food deserts, according to the federal government. The first is in Dixon, the second's in Fairfield, and Vallejo has three. Vallejo has a lot of food deserts. And so, I'm going to talk about, a little bit about our literature review that we conducted. There were four major themes that we found in the papers that we read. The first being low access. Ben already mentioned low access in terms of part of the definition of a food desert. But we found that there are more avenues of low access than we actually originally thought. Uh, a lot of low income individuals actually felt unsafe going to the supermarket near them and would sometimes actually go further out of their way because they didn't want to go to these unsafe areas. Uh, also goes along with this is the poor public transportation in some suburban areas. And a lot of people were unhappy with the food that was provided in the small mom and pop stores and again would travel even further away to get the better healthy food. Another area that we found in our papers was about subsidies. And these subsidies were actually both for the vendors, which would have their fees dropped under certain municipalities because they were offering healthy foods. Uh, we read a lot about mobile food carts and how the wandering fees that the carts had to pay were waived because they weren't selling tacos, they were selling healthy sandwiches or salads. And also the attendees of the markets or the supermarkets were getting benefits in terms of federal and state food assistance. The title of one of our more interesting papers was Hot Peppers and Parking Lot Peaches. And this particular article focused on a bunch of case studies of farmers markets throughout the United States and discussed reasons why some are very successful while others were not so successful. And when we say peripheral effects, we are doing a couple of these studies that have been ha done in other areas trying to overcome food deserts. And in one study specifically, they, they created a new farmer's market. But before they did the farmer's market, they were comparing grocery store prices at the corner markets, the little mom and pops, to those in the big grocery store. And they found that they were 26% higher than the grocery store. They also found that they didn't carry the vegetables and the fruits and etc. After the farmer's market was open, five years later, of course, everything's gone up in price. But when they went back and did the look, did the same evaluation, they found out these corner markets were now carrying produce when they didn't before. And they also found out that it was now only a 5% difference between the grocery store. So one of the side effects that was unexpected was by introducing a farmer's market into this poor area, it actually increased the availability of food outside of the farmer's market and decreased the price that people had to pay. <coughs> so how, what did we do and how did we do it? We originally wanted to take on to a Solano County Agricultural Department survey that was being mailed out to 525 registered voters that was randomly selected from by the computer. And we did take along and added on our own questions on that, but those surveys did not come back. So we went to plan B. 
And our plan B is we actually did an administered survey to irritating. We actually did an administrative survey to people, to the public at the two year-round farmers markets and three food bank distribution points within Solana County, two of those being within food deserts. We got about a little over 100, 110, 115, somewhere in that area responses. And, there, and, and they, from those responses, we actually found out that 53% of them were from those living below the poverty level. So those were exactly the people we were trying to figure out, and the majority of who we got were those people. And the other thing we did was key informant interviews. Now, we wanted to take a 360 view of this whole farmer's market and availability of food. So our interviews, we did nine key informant interviews. Three of them were with county employees. The county agriculture commissioner here in Solano County, the county agricultural commissioner in Marin County, sorry, and we also interviewed the health and the health and social service nutritional service manager. We also interviewed farmers and of course the farmers market managers and as I said the public that we interviewed. And this is all just a big circle. It all goes in a circle and it's all the points that kind of hit this when you're talking about a farmers market. So what we found out is that there are three main questions that had to be answered in order to make a farmers market viable, a virtual farmers market viable. The first, of course, is do they have internet access? If they don't have internet access, what's the use of having the virtual market? The second was attendance. Would they really attend this market? And the third is would this market be sustainable? It does no good to have something that's out there and people love, and a month and a half later you have to close it down because there's not enough funding or support or et cetera. So Andrina is going to talk to us about our access. So when we actually did the public questionnaires, we found that almost 70% of those surveyed that were under, under the poverty level had some form of internet access, either being at home or at work or through friends and family or at the library. And that was actually really interesting to us because that's definitely a majority of those people. And what was really cool was that everyone above the poverty line had internet access in some way. So in terms of the access side of creating a virtual farmer's market, it could definitely work out. So the second question was attendance. Would they attend it? In our <coughs> interviews, we actually found out consensus across all three areas that we interviewed, farmers, farmer and market managers, and the county staff, that accepting SNAP and WIC benefits is important. For those who don't know, SNAP stands for Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. That's what used to be called food stamps. In California, we actually call it CalFresh. But this is federal benefits that people get when they don't have enough money and enough food to eat, they assist them. And everyone agreed that it could not be successful, it would not be attended if we did not have those benefits. Then when we talked to the, to the, when we talked to the public in our surveys, survey says that, oh, your fonts are funky. Survey says that 48% of those that make, currently make an online purchase, it was only 48%. And of that, 50% said, yeah, we'll purchase product, produce online. What was fascinating is those living below the poverty level, it was 75% of them said, oh, sure, we'll purchase produce online. And it goes to show that those who have difficulty getting food will take any avenue they can that's going to benefit, which we found extremely positive for our research. As far as the sustainability of a virtual farmer's market, these four points above were really give it the meat of all of our key informant interviews. We found that members from the county, specifically the agricultural commissioners, dealing with the permits of starting a market, also with uh, you know, permits for food safety, various fees, everything needs to be taken care of just like a regular standstill <coughs> farmer's market. And for health and social services, it was really important for their departments to get the word out that there are subsidies available for individuals that need assistance to go to the farmer's market. The farmer's market does take federal food assistance. As far as the grower side, we would definitely need the growers to be at the market because if there are no growers, there's no market. So that's a really key point. Public attendance, just sort of the same thing as the growers, 
If no one shows up, the market will not succeed. So, and overall, amongst all three, Ben kind of mentioned this before, but these markets would need to accept the federal benefits to, to get to that low income population that we're trying to reach. So from what we found in our research, our recommendations are create it. Go out there, create the virtual farmers market. Now to do this, it's going to require a county or nonprofit organization to take ownership, to fund it, to create it, get it going. Now of course, someone has to be responsible or it's not going to go anywhere. The funding, if it's a county entity, you know, I hate to say it in this time of crisis, but there could be general fund money for it or there could be a special measure for it. But whether it's county or nonprofit, there are always grants out there. Two specific grants that are available through the federal government is the specialty, where is it, the Farmers Market Promotional Program, which is designed specifically to promote farmers markets in local areas. And there's also the Specialty Crop Block Grant, which is to promote specialty crops in an area. And Solano County, almost everything we grow is a specialty crop. So we qualify under that also. And of course, the appropriate staffing. In our research, we found that the time needed to fill out the forms to apply for WIC, to apply for food stamps, to apply for this, to get the areas together, is important. It's going to take a staff person. Minimally, we'd say a half-time staff person. Most We would actually recommend a full-time person because they've got to receive the food from the farmers, they've got to set up the stuff for the people to pick up, and they've got to be there for when the customers come and pick up the food and take their food home. So there has to be someone involved. And of course, we don't recommend recreating the wheel. How many times have we heard this? Oh, it's a great idea, let's build it. Why build something that already exists? In our research, we actually found multiple companies that exist out there that do some sort of eBay style farmers market for the farmer online. Not really a farmer's market, but an eBay style stuff for the farmers or a food hub. Many of those could be converted and used for us and there would be no purpose to recreate the will. And last, we need a location. That's part of what the the sponsoring organization, the county or the nonprofit would do, they need to provide somewhere for this to take place, for the people to come pick up their food, for the farmers to drop off. It's very important. So, how do we do it? Well, we have to be certified. Running the farmer's market requires certification. Why does it require certification? Because you cannot get, you cannot accept electronic benefits from the federal government if you are not a certified farmer's market. Farmer cannot accept benefits. They can't accept WIC, they cannot accept food stamps. Only the farmer's market can, because being certified is the agricultural department testifying that yes, you grow the tomatoes you're selling. And the federal government wants to make sure that's going on. Because no one wants to buy tomatoes and then find out they're pulled from South Texas. You know, if I'm buying at a farmer's market, I want local stuff. And of course, we have to accept the benefits. Without having the electronic the benefits, the welfare benefits, it would not meet the criteria of helping the people in the food deserts. And of course, advertising. Everything we found out in our research, and especially in the health and social services director we talked to, people need to know it's there. People don't know benefits are there, they can't use them. They need to know we, that the farmer's market does exist and they can get their stuff. And lastly, the quality of food. You have to have quality assurance. When people go to the farmer's market, in our interview, we had one question that was subjective. Why do you come? And number one answer was fresh produce. I know what I'm getting, I see it, I don't get mushy lettuce, I don't get eggplants that looked like they were growing in someone's toilet. I, you know, it's, it's what they, see what they get, they got the fresh, fresh quality produce. And so we'd have to have the same quality for them at the online farmer's market, and there'd have to be a way to deal with farmers who did not provide the top quality. It's something the farmers would have to sign a contract for saying, hey, I will provide this quality product. So, in short, this is my slide of an IT professional. And hand in hand, the IT professionals and growers can eliminate food deserts in Salado County by a virtual farmer's market. We feel it will succeed. So, we are now ready for questions.